What's up, Shift family? Welcome back. It's your girl, Denise, here. Just checking in as I will be your personal virtual host, host tonight for this kickoff. Now, we're so excited to be back. Now, some of you may know us, you may know me, but we may not know you. So, if you're new and this is your very first time stepping through, coming to kick it with us, do me a favor. Put your name in the chat below with the fire emoji so we know that you're new. We can introduce you to the squad. You know, we can love on you real quick and just say welcome. Now, Shift is the official, okay, like official, official college and young adult community for the whole church which is world changes church international and we are honored that you have stopped by we are also led by pastor dollar and pastor taffy and we say hey y'all we miss and love y'all too now what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna give you the whole rundown the whole spiel so that way you're connected you know what's going on and i'm gonna give you the announcements before we have service so you can stay plugged in now the first thing is like i said we're back we can't be together physically right now but we can build something pretty dope online and making sure that you're plugged in so go ahead and subscribe for me like subscribe comment on this channel okay yeah Every Tuesday, we're going to meet here at 8 o'clock so you don't miss a beat. And if you do happen to miss it, we got your work, life caught up, catch that replay. Share it with your friends and fam. Make sure that you're connected. Now, speaking of connected, our church is, you know, doing their thing. They are so committed to making sure that you're connected and that you have the word. We have multiple services throughout the week. So starting first, we got Bible study on Wednesdays at 10 a.m. and 7 p.m. twice wise and then we have our services on sunday now if that ain't enough our pastors are super committed to making sure that you get the word and they have devotions like on their i believe it's their instagram pastor dollar b on instagram pastor taffy has them stay connected on their youtube whatever means to get the word they gonna make sure that you have it and then my last announcement is to stay connected with us. Man, we're your family. We're here for you. And you can be connected via social media on Instagram at ShiftATL. We on Facebook at Shift Young Adult. We got a whole podcast for you podcasters out there. We are there for you. Okay? And you can reach us by emailing us shift at worldchangers.org. Now. I think that's all I got. But either way, I just want to make sure that you feel welcome. You feel the love. Um, make sure that you, if you're watching the replay, you still put the fire emoji. You still say what's up so we can still speak to you. Stay connected. Share this with your friends and your family. You know, have a good night because you are in for such a treat. Like, it's it's 2021. We're leveling, leveling up. We have plans and goals, aspirations. Like, we're getting to it. Come on, let's lift our hands to our Father. We're going into this new year trusting our God. Trusting that what he's done before, he'll do it again over and over and over. He's given us more than enough reason to trust. Hallelujah. For we trust in our God. And through his unfailing love, we will not be shaken. We will not be shaken. We will not be shaken. Come on, let's declare that tonight, right now. Here we go. For we trust in. For we trust in our God. And through his unfailing love. And through his We keep his love in mind when we go through. We will not be shaken. 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 Now right there in that moment, let's just begin to give our God praise and honor. Thank you, Lord, that because of your love, we don't have to fear the circumstance. We know that we are anchored in you. You are for us, God. You are for us, Jesus. We can trust in you. Hallelujah, Jesus. We will stand in the fight And though the armies rise up against us on all sides Guess what? We will not be shaken Come on, say that right now We will not be shaken We will not be shaken We will not be shaken For in the hour For in the hour
fall, God. All those against him will fall. Cause our God is stronger and he can do all things. Let's say no higher name. No higher name we can call. Jesus is greater. Jesus is greater. And because of that, we can do all things. We can do all things. Come on, let's declare that tonight.
What's going on, Chef family? Welcome back. Welcome back. Man, look. Listen. Listen. Oh, my goodness. I missed y'all. Ayana missed y'all. I don't know about you guys, but we really missed you. So right now, I'm going to give all y'all, um, guys, you included with, I'm going to just give you a real big hug, one of them. <sighs> one of them, because, man, it's been, it's been, um, it's been a while. It feels like, I mean, I haven't seen y'all since last year. <laughs> do, 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 do. <laughs> I couldn't help it. I know, you know it was coming. Man, um, welcome back, guys. Welcome back to Shift. Welcome back to, uh, well, welcome to, I know it's already, we already in uh, 2021, but welcome to 2021 officially from us. Um, it's been uh, a lot of different changes happening. Uh, a lot of things have been happening. I can't wait to catch up with you guys, see how you guys have been doing, what's new in your lives. Um, but man, welcome back. Welcome back. Um, for those that do not know me, if this might, if this is your first time, I am Baca. I am the young adult pastor for Shift College and Young Adult Community um, Ministry Community, whichever way you want to call us. But at the end of the day, we are Shift because that's who we are. So, man, um, thank you for for joining us tonight. Um, Thank you for inviting friends. Thank you for getting your food. Thank you for having your notes ready. Just thank you for 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 being a part of the squad. So again, if this is your first time, you probably have never heard me say. Well, of course, because it's your first time. You never heard me say a shout out to my squad. So when you are a part of Shift, you are a part of the Shift squad. So right now, I want to just give a shout out to my squad. <laughs> That's the way we doing this thing. So, um, hey man, we still virtual. <laughs> we we are still virtual. Uh, I I did have like a, a inkling of a thought that man, you know what? We might be we might be back in person, and uh, and then quickly I realized no, we're not gonna be back in person. <laughs> so, so hey man, we just rocking this thing out, and um, we're just thankful to God that we can even come and even be virtual. We can still connect with you guys. Um, so right now I'm going to go ahead and pray in and then we're going to jump straight into the message because I'm excited to just kind of uh, not only catch you guys up, but really just to just to share just a, a really a, a real brief nugget. It's not like a series or anything. This is just a um, this is just our 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 first our first day back. So, uh, yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and pray this thing in. So, Father God. I thank you and I praise you, Lord, for all that you are and all that you continue to be in our lives. I praise you, Father, for tonight. I thank you, Lord, for each and every person under the sound of my voice. I thank you, Father, for just not only revealing yourself to them, but also revealing yourself through them. I thank you, Father God, that they have an encounter with you unlike any other. I just praise you, Lord God, for, for just tonight being just special, for tonight being amazing, that we've already had an amazing day so far. We've already had a, an amazing uh, week start so far, Father. And I just thank you, Lord, that even continue throughout the rest of this week that it is blessed. I call it so right now. And I thank you, Lord, for the favor that's on our lives. I thank you, Lord, that tonight will be spoken with clarity. I thank you, Lord, that it'll be, it will be all of you and none of me. So, Holy Spirit, I rely on you. I invite you in. And I just thank you, Lord, for you just taking over, you sharing what it is that needs to be shared. And I just thank you, Lord, that at the end of this, Father, that we will never, ever, ever be the same. I thank you, Lord God, for all that you are. And it's in your name, Jesus, we pray. All that agree said. Amen. Amen. So, hey, man, uh, we in here. We still, we are still, uh, we're still on, we, we, <laughs> Right now, you don't see Ayana. She was actually going to come and join uh, today, but she um, we're, we're still cooking. So we're still awaiting our baby girl, number two. Uh, and we're so, I'm really excited. Ayana's excited. Haven is really excited. Um, so, hey, man, y'all are part of the family. So that's what we that's what we do. That's who we are. So I already know that for everybody, it was the same way that 2020 was like, what? And uh, what is going on? And then it's crazy because coming into 2021, just being real, it was like, what in the what is going on? It was a whole lot. <laughs> it's been a whole lot. But even though 2020 was different, um, and even though the entire country was shut down, even though um, there were attempts at stimulus packages, even though um, 
just stuff was happening in the clubs, people people dying, people getting hit. Like it's it's been a lot. <sighs> a lot. But you know one thing that's never changed? God. God has never changed. So even though today is February 2nd, and I know uh officially, I know the new year starts um on January 1st. Uh Ayana and I, we actually kind of look at, at February 1st as the start of our new year. I don't know if it's just because January kind of zooms by so fast. So I just want to say happy new year to you guys. Um, happy, happy new year. So, but it may be a new year, but God is still God. I'm going to say that again. It might be a new year, but God is still God. Man, uh, tonight is going to be really simple, um, but it's funny because it's so simple that it's deep. So I'm gonna I'm gonna say this statement, um, and this is how this is how deep this is tonight. Remember who's with you, God. Remember who's with you. So tonight, I guess tonight, uh, the message if you're taking notes tonight is called um, New Year, Same God. Um, so tonight is just gonna be that. We we just gonna, I'm just gonna I want I want tonight to encourage you. I want tonight to to uh to to get you back in focus rather than being so consumed with all that's going on that you feel overwhelmed, you feel hopeless, you feel doubt, you feel uh a lot of things, right? So instead, tonight, I hope that you are encouraged tonight. Um I know that I'm going to be encouraged tonight. I actually am already on a thousand um just being honest, and I didn't even wake up like that, but it's because I remember who God is. I remember who's with me. So just because this year hasn't changed, it doesn't make, mean that God has. And I do have to be honest that with so much going on, uh, just for this past year alone, like I'm, I don't know about you, but I did start to think, and and the thoughts tried to come up where I was like, uh, where's Jesus? <laughs> uh, where's God? I was like, hello, hello, Jesus. Is you out here? Is you out here? Is you out here? Like, because I started to feel like, you know, you start to have like a lot of questions, and it's like, man, it's kind of quiet. It's kind of, it's kind of quiet out here, and 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 the thoughts try to come up. And I don't know if this is you. If it is you, you can raise your hand. I can't see you, so you can be honest with yourself. If this you, I really started to have thoughts, and and questions started to try to pop up. Where it was like, where's God? Where's God? But even though the temptation to think or feel that he left us to fend for ourselves, it was very real. Like, <laughs> no matter how bad it seemed, no matter how bad, we had to remember who was with us. We had to because it's easy just to, huh, it's easy to fall out and just be like, well, mm. but we got to remember. Again, remember who is with you. All right, so. The way tonight is going to go, um, I'm going to share some points uh, that I have that's that's kind of like, this is literally the way we're setting it up. I'm going to share some points. Um, I do ask that you take these points down so you can go back and you can read and you can um, actually kind of flesh it out and you can even allow God to speak to you through the points that you've written down because at the end of the day, like, it's really about equipping us, right? Because if we rely on what we remember, we already lost the fight. <laughs> just being honest because there's so much that's fighting for our attention there's so much that's that's screaming for us to focus on and we need to just honestly be real with ourselves we need to write the stuff down we need to make it plain we need to be able to go back and read and allow God to speak to us right all right cool all right so here we go I'm doing this tonight is a little different than how I normally would but I'm I'm just jumping straight in um, especially for the sake of time so I want you to write this point down. This is point number one. I want you to remember who's in the boat with you. Remember who's in the boat with you. And we're going to go to a scripture right away. Let's go to Mark chapter 4, verse 35. We're going to read verses 35 through 41. Mark chapter 4, verses 35 through 41. And I'm going to read it from the message tra translation. All right, Mark 4, verse 35 through 41. All right, cool. 
And this is this. Here we go. All right, here we go. So late that day, he said to them, he being Jesus, he said to them, let's go across to the other side. Well, they took him in the boat as he was, and Jesus was talking to his disciples. So they took him in his boat, in the boat as he was. Again, they took him in the boat as he was. Jesus said, let's go across to the other side. And the disciples took Jesus in the boat as he was. So other boats came along and a huge storm came up. Waves poured into the boat, threatening to sink it. And Jesus was in the stern, head on a pillow, sleeping. Pause right there. Jesus said, let's go across to the other side. He said this to his disciples. So the disciples, they took him in the boat as he was. They said, all right, come on, let's go. Are right, y'all ready? Hey, hey, Peter, come on. Man, come on, man. Don't worry about that. Come on. Mark, what you doing? You don't need that. So everybody got in the boat, and they took, they went with Jesus in the boat to go across to the other side. But as they were going, a huge storm came up. Waves poured into the boat, and the, the waves were threatening to sink it. Now, if you're on a plane, turbulence. If you're in a boat, rain, a storm. Like, it's the same It's it's water, water turbulence, right? <laughs> so the boat is literally just like doing what it's doing, right? The boat is boating. And it's it's a storm. And, and the fact that the disciples are in the boat with him, and they're like, okay, what's going on? Like the the water is filling up the boat. Like it's it's a it's rain, it's thundering, it's lightning, all of that. And the moment with all this going on, if you are a friend. You take inventory. You're like, man, everybody good? Everybody good? And they look back and they saw Jesus sleep in the back of the boat. Jesus was sleeping while all this commotion was going on, right? So he was um, he was in the stern, head on a pillow, sleeping. Well, they roused him saying, teacher, is it nothing to you that we're going down? Because they're literally like there's water in this boat. First of all, how did you not wake up with not only the noise, but your feet are wet, your socks are wet, you got water in your Jordans. Like, how are you, how do you not feel the slushiness around you? Your pillow is soaking and you sleep. You sleep, right? So they woke him up saying, Man, what you doing? Wake up. Like, we're going down. And awake now, when he woke up, he was like, Wait, what? And he told the wind to pipe down and said to the sea, Quiet, settle down. The wind ran out of breath, the sea became smooth as glass. And I'm going to pause right there. They woke him up. And wait, when he woke up, he was like, he sees everybody in panic. He's like, what, the, what in the world? Are you? And it makes me think about if you're having a conversation with somebody and you're trying to like um, really like talk to them about, about something and it's real noisy, right? It's like the TV is real loud. You find yourself like almost about to get loud to compete with the noise, to compete with the volume, to compete with the distractions, to make sure that what you're saying is being heard, right? So I see Jesus like wake up and it's like, ah, 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 like, <laughs> like almost like you see if y'all seen, um, if y'all familiar with like SpongeBob, like you see SpongeBob and Patrick arms up running around the circle, ah, ah, like you know they're running around the boat like, oh my goodness, oh my goodness, everybody panicking. The wind is loud, people loud, people try, they they dumping water out the boat, and the whole time Jesus is like, it is too much noise. Hey, peace be still. Hey, calm down, wind. Simmer down there, storm. Calm, everybody calm down, calm down. And he responded and said, why are you such cowards? Don't you have any faith at all? Again, just, just see that picture. Everything is it's crazy because the storm was creating panic in the disciples because the storm was rocking the boat. The storm was filling the boat up with water. The storm was, was everybody's wet. It's a lot going on. They're not only trying to take water and dump it out, take it out of the boat so they don't drown, but they're also trying to make sure that everybody's safe. So everybody's like panicking. Ah! So the storm is creating panic. And then the disciples out of panic are coming to Jesus to project their panic. And they're like, oh, what's going on? All right, wake them up. Ah! So now it's two storms, a storm of panic 
and a storm literal literally in the in, in around them it's literally two storms happening so jesus stood up and said hold on the source of this panic is coming from the storm and he immediately spoke to the storm and said hey stop all that calm down and looked at this at the disciples in their storm He's like, what you scared of? Why are you so, so, like, why are you such cowards? Like, what are you afraid of? And he respond to, responded to them in this manner because he's like, who do you, where's your faith? Do you know what we just did? What we just came from? The people we just helped? And now you're sitting here and you're panicking because of some water. And the whole time, I'm asleep. The whole time, I'm asleep. So he said, why are you such cowards? Don't you have any faith at all? They were in absolute awe, staggered. Who is this anyway? They asked. Wind and sea at his beck and call. Wind and sea at his beck and call. So that's point number one, saying, Remember, who's in the boat with you? No matter how loud the storm gets, remember who's in the boat with you. We got to remember who's in the boat with us because out of our panic, our panic will project. And the crazy thing is Jesus could have been in the panic himself. He could have been like, oh, oh, what? What's happening? What's happening? Like, <laughs> like you know, when you, um, I, I don't know if y'all have done this as a joke or whatever, or even if you've seen it maybe on TikTok or something where, uh, people are somebody sleeping and you run into the room like you're running to the room while they're sleeping they're like oh whoa, what's going on get up get up we gotta go and they're like what 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 they don't even know what's actually going on but because of your panic you project your panic to create panic in them so then they jump up and they're like oh what, what's happening what's happening it's like this this going on we gotta go we gotta go and and they start moving they start hustling to try to get their stuff and they're like why am i moving so fast what's what's going on what's going on right but Jesus was so in control of his emotions that his response was, hey, first of all, hey, calm down. Second, what y'all doing? What y'all doing? So remember who's in the boat with you. Remember who's in the boat with you. Because I don't know about you guys, but 2020 was stormy. 2020 was like an ongoing Katrina, like, and I praise God that we we had our own boats, we had our own rafts, everyone was well. And truthfully, 2020 was an amazing year for us um, as a family, but also it it was different. And I know there's a lot of people that it was different for. But when you remember who's in the boat with you, it doesn't matter how much water is getting in the boat. The fact that you know who's in the boat with you, if they're not panicking, I don't panic. And Jesus not panicking. So remember who's in the boat with you. All right, so here goes number two. And we're going to go to the scripture first. Let's go to 2 Timothy chapter 2, 11 through 13. 2 Timothy chapter 2. And I'm going to read verses 11 through 13. I'm actually going to read this one from the Passion Translation. All right. <clears throat> All right, and it reads, you can trust these words. If we were joined with him in his death, then we are joined with him in his life. If we are joined with him in his sufferings, then we will reign together with him in his triumph. But if we disregard him, then he will also disregard us. But even if we are faithless, he will still be full of faith, for he never wavers in his faithfulness to us. I'm going to read that one more time. You can trust these words. If we were joined with him in his death, then we are joined with him in his life. If we are joined with him in his sufferings, then we will reign together with him in his triumph. But if we disregard him, then he will also disregard us. But even if we are faithless, he will still be full of faith, for he never wavers in his faithfulness to us. Now, sometimes I know, especially back in the day, I would read that or even hear, oh, if we disregard him, then he will also disregard us. And I would always see it like, oh, well, if I if I <laughs> if I ignore Jesus, he's gonna ignore me like like he's petty. 
And I realized even in, in as I was preparing for tonight, as I was reading it, it's not about anything with Jesus being petty. It's all about if you're disregarding him, you don't even regard that he's that he's there. By you not regarding that he's there, <laughs> it's almost like, put it like this. If you don't believe that when you sit in the chair, the chair was hold you, the chair will hold you, the chair can't hold you, right? So if you don't believe that the chair can hold you, you won't sit in it. So that means that the chair can't hold you. So because it's based on what you believe, that makes it almost conditional. But the reality is the chair never changed. Your belief in the chair changed. So even when it comes to what we read as far as if we disregard him, then he'll also disregard us. It's not that he changed. It's our belief or our regard for him changed. So because we're not regarding him, he doesn't regard us. But it's not because he doesn't regard us. It's because we don't regard him. So, and I'm not saying it as like a cause and effect type of thing, but what I'm saying is like it's all based on if I believe this chair can hold me, my belief is activated the moment I sit in this chair because now I know the chair can hold me. But the fact is the chair always could hold me. I just never stepped out to see if it could hold me. You get what I'm saying? Okay. All right. So, so that's this is point number two. Remember that he is faithful even when we aren't. He is faithful even when we aren't. We can't put God in the same box as everybody else because he's not everybody else. God isn't petty. He's not petty. He's faithful to us regardless of our getting it right or not. He's faithful to us regardless of even if we believe or not. Our belief doesn't change God at all. <laughs> but if we don't believe that he can be, that he's God, if we don't believe that he's God, then we don't get the benefit of that. But that doesn't change who he is. You get what I'm saying? Like the fact that a lot, for a lot of people, 2020 had them thinking, where's God? Oh, God left me. Oh, God, blah, blah, blah. And they're wanting to give up and lose hope. Your lack of hope or faith in God did not change God. It changed your your perception or the way that you can even connect with him because you're like, well, I don't, he's not doing nothing for me. So I'm not going to believe him. Well, that doesn't change him. And he's still going to be faithful even if you don't believe him. But the moment you believe him, you receive the benefit of believing him. You get what I'm saying? I, I, I pray that y'all get that. Uh, Cause y'all not like looking at me. So I can't like hear you and be like, yeah, he got it. He got it. Anyway. <laughs> so that's point number two. Remember that he's faithful even when we aren't. And that's necessary to know because even in 2021 now, uh, just being real, nobody expected 2020. I know, I know I didn't. I didn't expect 2020 to be like that. I was expecting, I was ready for 2020. Like, yeah, this is the year of clarity, cuz. It's the year of clarity. Like, we, it's a clear vision all the way, cuz. We're about to do this thing, cuz. Like, that's the way, like, I was extremely excited. I had plans. I had things that I was ready to move in, and then everything started getting disrupted. And then coming into 2021, it was like, all right, either I can allow disruptions to keep me disrupted, or I can realize that the year might have changed, but God is still the same. Which leads me to our next point. Let's go to Romans chapter 8, and I'm going to read verse 38. Romans 8, verse 38. I pray y'all are getting something out of this. Um, if you are, type in the, in the um, chat box, like, I get it. I get it, cuz. You got to say cuz, like C-U-Z. I get it, cuz. <laughs> All right, Romans 8, verse 38, and I'm going to read it. I'll read it from the Passion Translation. All right, and it reads, So now I live with the confidence that there is nothing in the universe with the power to separate us from God's love. I'm convinced that his love will triumph over death, life troubles, fallen angels, or dark rulers in the heavens. There is nothing in our present or future circumstances that can weaken his love. I'm going to go to verse 39. There is no power above us or beneath us, no power that could ever be found in the universe that can distance us from God's passionate love, which is lavished upon us through our Lord Jesus, the anointed one. 
Simply put, point three, remember that God loves you. Remember that God loves you because there's nothing that can separate you from God's love. Nothing, like nothing can separate you from God's love. And we just read that. So we have to live with the confidence that there's nothing in the universe with the power to separate us from God's love. There's nothing in the universe with the power to separate us from God's love. Nothing. And if I go to the, I'm going to go to the message translation and I'll just read just a piece of this so you can see um, to, to kind of intensify it a little bit more. Um, do you think anyone is going to be able to drive a wedge between us and Christ's love for us? There is no way, not trouble, not hard times, not hatred, not hunger, not homelessness, not bullying threats, not backstabbing, not even the worst sins listed in scripture. None of this phases us because Jesus loves us. I'm absolutely convinced that nothing, nothing living or dead, angelic or demonic, today or tomorrow, high or low, thinkable or unthinkable, absolutely nothing can get between us and God's love because of the way that Jesus, our master, has embraced us. So we got to remember that God loves us. If we don't remember that God loves us, then we'll allow the new year to change and make us feel like, well, this must be a new God. No, no, no. New year, same God. He never changes. He never changes. Somebody type that in the chat box. He never changes. And there's nothing that can separate us from his love. And then, like the fact that nothing can separate us from his love, that, that proves how his love is consistent. It doesn't change. He never changes. I got two more points. All right. So um, let's go to another scripture. Hebrews 13. And I'm going to read verses 5 through 6. Hebrews 13. And I'm going to read verses 5 through 6. I think I'm going to read it from the, yeah, I'll read it from the Passion Translation. All right, verses 5 through 6. Don't be obsessed with money, but live content with what you, with what you have. For you always have God's presence. For, he has, for hasn't he promised you, I will never leave you alone, never and I will never loosen my I will not loosen my grip on your life. So we can say with great confidence, I know the Lord is for me and I will never be afraid of what people may do to me. And point 4 simply says, you are not alone. What are you afraid of? You are not alone. What are you afraid of? And I'm 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 hoping these points. I know I'm kind of going through it quick, so I do I do say, hey, uh, go back and replay this. But we have to know and remember who's actually with us. Otherwise, because time is always changing, we will think that he changed with time, and he didn't. He he's exempt from time. Like God is timeless, right? So you are not alone. You are not alone. We have to remember, you have to remember who's in your corner. You are never alone. And I'm going to read, read verse 6 one more time. We can say with great confidence, I know the Lord is for me, and I will never be afraid of what people may do to me. So you cannot be afraid of what people may do to you. And that's, that's the same way, like, <laughs> you sit there and you go to a, um, I'm, I'm going to use this example. Um, you go to school or wherever and you, you um, somebody, let's say somebody's bullying, right? And you have this thought like, man, like, uh, I was so, like, I was so used to all my friends being with me. So I knew I was protected because I knew I had somebody in my corner. So you like walk through the hallways and then you have this thought that somebody's going to try, pretty much try you. And you're like, man, see, if I had my boys or if I had my people, I can walk with my chest out a little bit more because I'm like, ain't nobody going to mess with me. Ain't nobody going to mess with me because <laughs> I got my people, right? You can have that thought. You can easily have that thought. But because you're in a new school, you now feel kind of intimidated or you walk with your head lower 
Because you have this thought that, man, I'm by myself. I don't know anybody in here. It's just me in here. I don't, I, it's just, it's just me. But when you have that knowing, like imagine that same person with their head down talking about it's just me. And then as they're walking through the halls, they hear somebody call their name out and they look up that even though they moved, their friends are at the same school now too. So now they walk back out with, hold on, I'm not by myself. It's my boys. It's my people. And the thing, what I'm saying is we have to have that same type of confidence that when you're, just because you're in a new year, you're in a new situation, you still have the same God that's with you, the same God that's been with you from the beginning, the same God that, that lifted you up, the same God that shielded you, the same God that protected you from everything that you were facing, the same God that removed all the fear and the doubt because you thought everything was closing in on you, and then you look up and you see God is literally pushing the walls out so that you won't be consumed. It's the same God. So rather than us walking around like this saying, man, I'm, it's, I don't know, I'm by myself, it's a brand new year, I didn't. I seen too much happen to other people, so that could happen to me. So now I'm projecting the fear, thinking that something's gonna happen to me. Instead of remembering who's with you, he said that I will never loosen my grip on your life. I will never leave you alone, never. And because of that, we can say with great confidence, I know the Lord is for me, and I will never be afraid of what may, what people may do to me. We can't be afraid. So again, point four says you are not alone. You are not alone. Remember who's in your corner. Remember. And that leads me to my last point, which is my the a scripture that changed my life, one of my life scriptures. So we're about to read it together. Matthew 6. Go to Matthew 6. We're going to read verses uh, 25 through 34. Matthew 6, verses 25 through 34. Y'all getting some stuff out of this? You better. <laughs> you better. All right. So I'm going to read this kind of quick, again, for the sake of time, because I'm about to close after this. Um, Matthew 6, verses 25 through 34. All right, verse 25 says, this is why I tell you to never be worried about your life. For all that you need will be provided, such as food, water, clothing, everything your body needs. Isn't there more to your life than a meal? Isn't your body more than clothing? Look at the birds. Do you think they worry about their existence? They don't plant or reap or store up food, yet your heavenly father provides them each with food. Aren't you much more valuable to your father than they? So which one of you by worrying could add anything to your life. And why would you worry about your clothing? Look at all the beautiful flowers of the field. They don't work or toil. And yet not even Solomon in all his splendor was, ro was robed in beauty more than one of these. So if God has clothed the meadow with hay, which is here for such a short time and then dried up and burned, won't he provide for you the clothes you need even though you live with such little faith? Man. Verse 31. Matter of fact, let me read verse 30, 31 one more time. And just in case you like flipping, I'm in the Passion Translation if I didn't say it, so I apologize. So verse 30 says, So if God has clothed the meadow with hay, which is here for such a short time and then dried up and burned, won't he provide for you the clothes you need, even though you live with such little faith? <laughs> he said, I'm going to provide for you even though you have little faith. Even though you're struggling to believe, I'm still going to provide for you. Boy, verse 31. So then, forsake your worries. Why would you say, what will we eat? Or what will we drink? Or what will we wear? For that is what the unbelievers chase after. Doesn't your heavenly father already know the things your bodies require? So above all, constantly chase after the realm of God's kingdom and the righteousness that proceeds from him. Then all these less important things will begin, will be given to you abundantly. Refuse to worry about tomorrow, but deal with each challenge that comes your way one day at a time. Tomorrow will take care of itself. 
tomorrow will take care of itself. When I was um, preparing for tonight, I was... I was feeling not only weight in some ways of things that even I'm believing for and that myself and Ayana that we're believing that we our own conversation on, that we're having our own conversations on. But I was feeling even the the weight of you. I was feeling the pressure that you've been feeling. I've been feeling the questions that you've been having. I've been feeling the the just the the way you like the the doubts that you're you're fighting off the the cares that are trying to jump into your book bag to so now you're carrying more putting a strain on your back and on your shoulders it's like i was i was feeling and hearing all of those things but as i was preparing and when i got to this scripture i was reminded just how much god loves me just how much God loves you. That a lot of us have pressure because we project it. And when I say we project it, it's because we're looking, we're living in today, today being Tuesday, and we're thinking about a need that we have on, on Friday. Or we're thinking about a time of, man, but I'm I'm 32 years old and I'm still single. When is it going to be my time? And we're thinking about, oh, well, if I don't get married by the time I'm 37, then that means it is, it's, I was a failure and it's something wrong with me. So now we're, we're projecting years upon years on Tuesday. Or we're thinking about, man, if, if, only, uh, if only I can, I can pay off my student loan um, in, in, um, by August, even though I just went into the repayment period, then I'll be, it'll be perfect. Or if I can land this job or if I can, uh, whatever the case may be, whatever it is, we are projecting and putting so much pressure on today for today to solve the problems of tomorrow. So today is not responsible for tomorrow. Today is responsible for today. And it's a, it's, it's a quote that Ayana and I, we, we, um, we say regularly, but I also, I put it, as a reminder on my phone and the quote is today is today and tomorrow is tomorrow today is today and tomorrow is tomorrow don't overwhelm yourself with two weeks down the line but what about what if but uh how maybe no we got to protect our peace breathe in today do that with me. Breathe in today. Let's inhale really quick. Go. It's today. It's today. Today is today. Today isn't tomorrow. And tomorrow isn't today. Today is today. And tomorrow is tomorrow. The year, it's always going to change. Time, for us, because we are where we live in time, time is always moving. Like, literally, it's, <laughs> it, it was 8 o'clock, like, an hour ago. It's not, it's not 8 o'clock anymore, right? It's now about 8.40, 8.50. I don't know. I'm not looking at the time, but you get what I'm saying. It's now after time that we started. And, and it's crazy how we can sometimes be so like, God is so good. God is so, oh, my goodness, look what God did. And we, we, we embrace the moment where God came through. But then two hours later, we end up forgetting because time changed. And we have this thought that because, yeah, God came through, at seven o'clock, but now it's midnight and I need God to come through again. And then we start to worry, we start to panic, we start to have fear, thinking that, okay, I don't know if God gonna come through again. Maybe he ran out of coming throughs. Maybe God is tired now. Maybe he's taking a break because he came through then. I mean, that's too much. I'm putting too much on God because he came through here and now I'm asking if he, for him to come through here. 
God is not moved by what's happening because he already prepared for what's happening. God already happened. <laughs> That's good. God already happened. He's not concerned with what's happening because God already happened. He already has taken care of everything we need. He's already provided solutions, uh, outcomes, um, detours. He's already pro literally provided everything. And the entire time he has his firm grip on us. And he's like, I'm never letting you go because you're mine. You're my child. You're my son. You're my daughter. You're my baby. You're my boopy. You're mine. I'm never letting go of you. But what happens is, God comes through at 7 o'clock, and by 12 o'clock, we pay more attention and put more faith in the problem that's in front of us, in the time that has changed, and we forget that the entire time God was there in the back of the boat. So have you forgotten who's in the back of your boat? Have you forgotten that he's faithful even when we aren't? Or are you basing God's faithfulness on you being faithful? And you're like, well, because I didn't do this right, or I didn't read today, or I didn't dot all my I's, I didn't cross all my T's. So because I messed up, that means God is like, ah, you're not perfect. Because if we're being honest, like, we do that regularly. We think God is us, and he's not. God is God. And we got to let God be God rather than putting the same, uh, trying to make us God and then faulting God when we don't live up to it. Boy, have you forgotten that God loves you? Or maybe you're thinking, well, I feel alone. I feel alone in the moment because it's quiet. I feel alone because I'm crying out, Lord, where are you? My rent got to be paid. Where are you? And you feel like, well, it's just, it's too quiet. I don't see anything moving. So now we literally forgot about two weeks ago. We forgot about Yesterday, we forgot about last year. We forgot about all that God has done already. And we now are putting pressure on today to handle all of our issues. This is something that I got. And it really helped me. There will always be a storm. It's just a part of it. The weather's always changing. Seasons are always changing. One season, there's there's growth. Another season, the leaves wither. Another season, it's raining. Another season, it's really hot. Another season, it's really cold. Seasons are always changing. And sometimes when seasons change, remnants of one season comes into another season, which causes even more storms because of the climate that is adjusting to the new climate. And now everything is merging together. It's like, oh, oh, hold on, I didn't fit right there. Here comes a storm. And that's what happens in our lives where we're, we're going through what we think are just emotions, not realizing that as we're moving, things are bumping into each other. And when they're bumping into each other, sometimes there's a storm. Sometimes there's a challenge. Sometimes there's, there's a test. Sometimes there's something that we have to go through because we have to go to the other side. Because even though you think that you're going to stay at the shore, the reality is, is that God has already called you to go to the other side. But sometimes we look up and we see the clouds and we think that it's about the storm. Why would I go to the other side? Forgetting that the person that said go to the other side is going to be in the boat with us. So I close with this statement. Don't give up on God. I know the temptation is there, especially because you're seeing everybody, everybody else seem like they're giving up, or maybe it's the people that you follow online and you're just seeing, oh, it looks like everybody's giving up. So you're looking for an alternate way or, or something else to do rather than letting God be God. So don't give up on God and don't let a year change make you think that God changed because he hasn't. He is the same yesterday today, and forever. It might be a new year, but he's still the same God. Father God, I just thank you 
and I praise you for all that you are. I thank you, Lord God, for what you have spoken tonight. I thank you, Lord God, for the clarity, the understanding. I thank you, Lord God, for the word behind the word. And right now, Father, I pray that what was spoken tonight, what was shared tonight, it will not return into you void, but it will accomplish that to what you ascended to do. I thank you, Lord God, that each and every person under the sound of my voice, that you spoke to them directly where they are. I thank you, Lord, that they got what they needed, which is what you needed to say to them. And I just thank you, Lord, that they receive it right now. I thank you, Lord, for using me. And I just praise you, Lord, for just continuing to, to show up and show out. And thank you for never changing. I thank you, Father, for today. For today. Because this is the day that you made just for me. So I will rejoice and be exceedingly glad in it. Tomorrow will be tomorrow. But today is today. And you're still God. I thank you for it right now, Father, and it's in your name, Jesus, we pray. And all that agree, say it. Amen. Hey, man, I thank you for joining us tonight. I really pray that you got some stuff out of tonight. I pray that there was something specifically for you, which I believe that it was, to be honest. And I pray that you wrote down, um, you wrote down whatever you heard God say to you, whatever you heard God say to you, that you wrote that down. Because we are in a time where it is either trust God or not. <laughs> it's either trust them or not. And you got to remember that he loves you. He loves you like you, you, he loves you. You can't forget that because everything wants you to think that he's gone and he's not. So, um, I'm so out of time. Uh, but let's, let's continue in this thing. And and really, share this message with somebody else. Share this encouragement with somebody else. To let them know, hey, hey, I know that you were uh, you were watching whatever game tonight, but uh, I need you to watch this. I need you to be encouraged about it. This was what we were talking about yesterday. We were just talking about this, and God literally used Baca to say this to me. And I know he's saying it to you. So share this message. So um, before I get out of here, I want to, of course, extend the invitation. If look, look at me. I am, I'm an African American. Uh, there's nothing corny about me. I believe that I'm dope as ever because God made me that way, and I'm a Christian. I love Jesus. I love Jesus, and I'm unashamed about it. I don't apologize for it. Listen, you can be exactly who you are and love God. When I say exactly who you are, meaning the way that you, the way that you carry yourself, the way that you, um, the way you dress, the way you laugh, the way you, the, just the way you are, like you can be who you are and love God. And I say that because sometimes we think, oh, if I, if I become a Christian and oh, God is, he's saving me. That means he's going to make me into this, uh, robot where everybody wears khakis and we all kind of move a certain way. It's not, that ain't it. <laughs> God, he wants to free you from yourself. So if you're not saved, if you don't know Jesus, listen, I'm telling it to you straight. You wasting your life because you have no idea the totality, the fullness of who you really are if you don't know Jesus. That's just keeping it real. I'm keeping it a whole buck. So if you're not saved, I just ask you to get saved. And before you say, well, how get saved? Don't worry. <laughs> we got you. I want to lead you right now. I want to lead you in, into the prayer of salvation. And it's not going to be deep. It's not going to be deep. So literally a couple seconds, I want you to repeat this after me. And matter of fact, the entire squad, I ask that you also say this too. Um, let's join in together as a squad, as one unit. And let's also pray with those who are, who are even saying this possibly for the first time. So repeat this after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I ask that you save me. I know that you died and that you rose again just for me. I've heard it for years. But tonight, I heard it as clear as day. I want to know the life you have for me. So I receive your salvation. I believe that you died just for me. And I thank you for saving me. I receive you into my heart. 
And I ask that you change me. Cleanse me and make me new the, say, the way that you say you would. I'm saved. I receive it now. Amen. It's real simple. It's real simple. But it's necessary for us to know I've received Jesus as my Lord and Savior. <laughs> you're, not, you're not your Lord and Savior. You couldn't do it in the first place. That's why he came to die for us. So if that was your first time saying it, I want you to do this. I want you to simply text, I'm saved, to the number on the screen right now. Text, I'm saved, uh, to 51555. We want to get some information in your hands. We want to welcome you into the squad. We just want you to know, man, look, you're not by yourself. Not only are you not alone because God will never leave you, but you're not alone because you're now part of a family. So, welcome. Everybody give it up for those that just said it. Y'all uh, put the clap emojis, put the some firework emojis, uh, put some bam, 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 whatever. Just light it up in the chat right now. Let them know, man. Congratulations. Welcome to the family. If that was your first time. And, um, and yeah, we love you. And we, we just thank God for you. You are now starting something amazing. All right. Secondly, um, if you would like to also sow into our ministry, man, we appreciate all the gifts that you guys give and what you've given just even last year virtually. We thank you for it. Um, it is not going in my pocket. It is not coming to my house. It goes straight into our ministry. So if you would like to sow into our ministry, you can do so right now um, by following the information that's on the screen. You can text, excuse me, text the word world changers, leave a space and put the amount you want to give. So like world changers space 20 and send that to 74483. Excuse me. All of the information right now is on the screen. Um, and really, just thank you for your gifts, man. Like, we really appreciate it. Man, I love you guys. Um, I went I went a little bit over time, um, but uh, we're working at it. <laughs> so uh, I just, man, listen, God is so good. He's too good to be sad, so. Um, I love you guys. Ayana loves you guys. And um, and I just want, again want to say welcome to 2021. We're just getting started. So let's go. Uh, I want you to have an amazing night. I want you to have an amazing week. And stay tuned for these, uh, these closing announcements. And I will see y'all next week. All right, y'all. Peace. I'm sorry, I'm just trying to collect myself because was that not such a dope word? Like, New Year, same God. New Year, same God. New Year, same God. Like, New Year, same God. Okay, so let me calm down. I hope you took away something from tonight. I hope that it's gonna carry you through the rest of your week and encourage you all week long. Um, be sure to check us out every single week to get a dope word like that, okay? That you can stay plugged into real quick. On YouTube, we live every single Tuesday at 8 o'clock. Do not forget that. And if you happen to miss it, don't worry. We got them replays right here for you. Check out the old ones. Check out the podcast, whatever you need to do. In addition to shit showing up for you, your church got you unlocked. Catch our pastors, Pastor Dollar, on Wednesdays at 10 a.m. and 7 p.m. and Sundays at 10 a.m. They got the devotionals, like I said, on their pages, on YouTube, Facebook, sometimes Instagram. Whatever you need, we got you. We're so excited that you have brought in a new year with us. We are honored that we get to create this dope community for college and young adults. Now, what I want you to do is make sure that you're plugged in to our page. So this YouTube channel, in addition to our YouTube channel, of course, I said Instagram. I'm repeating myself, but that's because we hard-headed. We know everything. We don't do everything we need to do the first time. So go ahead and stay connected and stay subscribed. It's been an honor, okay, to walk y'all through this kickoff. Walk y'all through this kickoff. New Year, same God, New Year, doing the most. Don't worry, because I'm going to be doing the most next week, too. Right here on YouTube. Come check us out. We love y'all. Bye.